your understanding of economic freedom it's a uh, completely different from ours because yours it's a promotion of free market and neoliberal uh, policies and uh, we are giving economic freedom the leftist radical interpretation which means amongst others that uh, the land the banks the natural resources and strategic sectors of the economy should be in the hands of the people we need to create an equality in this country but that equality is not going to be achieved until there is a decisive state intervention because those who are at an advanced stage are beneficiaries of a state that protected them are beneficiaries of a state that gave them opportunities to the exclusion of black people and therefore to create an impression that black people should make it on their own without state intervention, it's unrealistic and unacceptable. The state must take a deliberate decision to nationalize the land and distribute it for equal uh, use for everyone. The state has passed a law in this country that willing buyer, willing seller. Even if people want to buy the land. If there is no willing seller, we'll never own a piece of land. It doesn't matter how much money we get from wherever, God knows. And then we come here and say we want to buy a piece of land in Stellenbosch. If there is no willing seller, we'll not buy that land. Therefore, even when we have money, we'll still not own a piece of land in our own country. So we have to get a situation where the land is owned by the state and is given to all of us black and white. Because 80% of land owners in this country are white people. Yet 80% of the population is black people. It's unacceptable. We, we have to have this debate and that's why you call us controversial and all sorts of names because you are refusing to listen to the truth. And anyone who speaks the truth is an unacceptable person in society. And we're not saying this truth in a violent way. We're saying it openly in a frank manner. 80% of the almost 10% of the population owns the land. And without the land, we are nothing. With the land, you have everything. You've got you mineral resources, you've got natural resources, and you can do anything. So we remain a conquered nation. We remain a conquered nation. Apartheid economy is still continuing. Because when you went to the table, when business negotiated with the former liberation movement, you made certain things very clear. You are not prepared to surrender the land. You are not prepared to surrender the economy. You told them you can have a black president, but you are not going to do anything with our property ownership. When the liberation started in South Africa, it was not about voting. Voting was by the way. The formation of liberation movements followed the wars of dispossession. And Africans realized that if we fight as small groups, we get defeated. We need to come together and fight together under a progressive body. Fight for what? For reclaiming of our land. So you can't tell us we gave you 1994, that's enough. That's not what we formed the liberation for. We formed the liberation to reclaim our land, to reclaim our wealth. The economy is the land. The economy is the mines and all mineral resources. The economy is the food. There is no food without the land. The economy is the banks, retail stores. We need the participation of our people in the technology and science because we cannot succeed to fight even 
diseases that, diseases that can be cured for as long as our people do not own pharmaceutical companies. The diseases that must be cured easily kill our people because pharmaceutical companies are owned by capital which is obsessed with maximizing profit at the expense of people. So we don't subscribe uh, to those types of... All of this infrastructure, me and you must agree about, which we are agreeing, will never be realized because it has been proven that taxes alone cannot raise sufficient capital for the state. We have been collecting taxes since 1994. We still have a problem of infrastructural development because the money is not enough. We said to capital, run the economy, take charge of the economy, and through you paying taxes, then we'll be able as a state to develop this country. The same capital which we said run the economy still is not paying tax. They engage in financial illicit flows. They engage in aggressive tax avoid avoidance in the country. No decisive legislation to deal with that. People take money in South Africa and invest it in tax havens. They are untouchable. If you do anything to them, that is an interference. The state must not interfere. People, the investors will leave the country if the state goes on interfering in the, in the economy. So we do not agree. We have this problem. We have this problem we are having today of an inequality which is growing, which is racially based because of the economy which is in the hands of capital. The economy is not in the hands of the state as we speak now. It's in your hands. You are the ones who are owning strategic sectors of the economy. And therefore, if anything that is in the hands of private sector is so excellent and successful, why is Africa not successful? Because the economy of Africa is not in the hands of socialist state or communist state. It's private owned. If capitalism worked for America and Europe, capitalism has not worked for Africa. Africa has not failed because of a capitalist, I mean, because of communist or socialist economic policies. It failed because the multinational and capitalists come and milk our resources, exploit our resources, and leave this continent without anything. So we do not agree. So a solution, which is very clear in the hands of the EFF, is that we need the expropriation of land without compensation. And people say that is extreme, that is unacceptable. Land was taken through black genocide. We're not talking white genocide. We're talking legislation passed through parliament, democratic parliament, which will say the state is the owner of the land and the land shall be allocated to people who have indicated clearly what they want to do with this land and whether what they want to do, it is in the public interest and purpose. Because there are a lot of pieces of land all over the continent, they are idling. Some of them are even foreign owned. Yet black people live in congested environments. They do not own a piece of land. When they try to occupy the land next to them, no, that land has been rezoned, it's owned by some fellow in London. We live like pigs in Alexander, in Langa, here, everywhere else. We have no land. And that is the first thing we need to do, expropriate the land so that we bring back the dignity of our people. There is no one who can have dignity and confidence if you do not own a piece of property. You remain a subject of those who own the means of production. We are tired of being subjects. We want to own. So, we are of a view that even the mines, the banks, must be in the state ownership. But what do you do in a South African economy where already these things are in the hands of capital? You must establish your own bank as a state. 
to compete the existing banks, you must establish your own state-owned uh, mining company. You must establish your own uh, pharmaceutical company. So by doing that, we do not shut down private ownership. The private ownership must coexist with state ownership, but the state must be the owner and the controller of such strategic sectors uh, of uh, the economy. Somebody is going to shout from the back and say the state is incompetent and everywhere else where the state is found, things do not run properly. It's not true. It's not true. American Army is a state-owned, is the biggest employer in the whole world, is the, one of the best state-owned companies. This GPS you are talking about is a GPS that is produced by a state-owned company called American Army. This internet you have is produced by a state-owned company called American Army. So we must not be misled that everything else state-owned is inherently corrupt and therefore it will collapse. Even the private sector has got the same problem. If we go to Jobeck High Court here, there are private companies being liquidated every day. So it's not true that everything else owned by private sector is inherently progressive. So we are saying here in South Africa, anything that is going to help us, it is a state intervention in partnership with private sector to run a successful economy.